One of the pluses of being incredibly rich is being able to skip over the long queues on airline flights by splashing out on a private jet. Yet, is there a difference between being a commercial airline or private plane pilot? Well, that's what we're going to explore today. We'll see what the jet-setting life of a private corporate pilot is like, with the many roles they have to cover. We'll also explore the training to become a pilot for the wealthy and the eye-watering costs. Then we'll find out just how much cash the private pilots bring in with their skills. So let's get started! A commercial airline pilot and a private pilot have a lot of crossover, of course, when it comes to their responsibilities. One of the main differences is the extra tasks the private pilot has to do. After all, most of the time, they're the only crew on board the plane. For example, they have to clean the cabin. An unnamed actor was flying on a plane with her children. The kids drew, cut, and wrecked the interior. In the end, the plane company sent a bill of $250,000. However, they refused to pay. Another time, a CEO and his family covered the cabin with mud and, weirdly, pizza sauce. This resulted in a cleaning bill of $2,100. Private pilots have to interact with their passengers. Beyond the occasional announcement on an airline plane's intercom, the pilots will lock the cockpit door and avoid all non-crew. Private pilots are expected to greet their passengers. So, good customer service skills are a must. The pilots also have to store any luggage and provide the safety speech the cabin crew would usually deal with. The cockpit on a private plane either isn't closed or isn't there, so they can expect their passengers to chat with them during the flight. There's usually two pilots on a private plane, the captain and the co-pilot. However, there are a number of planes that only require one to fly the jet. Before the guests arrive, the pilot is expected to be at the airport an hour before takeoff. They have a range of tasks such as ordering fuel, filing the flight plan, sorting out the catering, and so on. Airline pilots have to check their equipment, fuel, etc. too, however, they can do this as the passengers board and wait, while private plane clients expect to leave as soon as they arrive. Private pilots are expected to be ready at a moment's notice, which means they could be working on holidays like Christmas. It's heavily suggested that they live close to the airport their client tends to fly from. Private aircrafts can even work up to 14 hours a day. Yet, according to reports, private pilots find their work more informal and relaxed than their previous airline work. If you fancy getting a private plane for your own needs, they can be pricey. Just to charter, they can cost between $1,200 and $10,000 per hour. But the price increases depending on the plane and extra features wanted by the client. As for buying your own jet, costs can vary widely. Most planes cost between $2 million to $100 million. A Global 5000 made by Bombardier, for example, can cost up to $22 million. During 2020, Paul Jebeli, who helps clients purchase planes, stated that in one month, his clients spent a collective $200 million. Yet the added expenses can bring even more financial woes. A blown tire on a jet can cost between $2,000 to $3,000 to replace while annual operating fees can often cost between $500,000 to $1 million for luxury airplanes. One of the most important aspects for a pilot is the proper training and licenses. After all, in 2017, private pilot Arnold Gerald Lido III was flying passengers without a proper license for two years. He was sentenced to federal prison for 10 months and fined $5,500. The cost of training can get high, which is why a number of pilots will first go into the Air Force, get all the training, certifications, and a bachelor's degree, and then venture into the public sector after their service. For those wanting to learn away from the military, the most popular method is to start with flight school. A number of facilities offer a range of different courses, and as such, you can tailor what type of pilot you want to be. But we're going to focus on being a corporate private pilot. Before starting school, some of them require prospective pilots to take an introductory flight course, and these can cost up to $250 in the U.S. Then they have to get a medical certificate approved by the FAA, or Federal Aviation Administration. While not required, it's strongly suggested that people acquire a student pilot certificate, which is around $200. After that, flight school beckons. In order to become a commercial pilot, they have to log 250 hours in the air altogether. One company, ATP Flight School, offers a couple of complete packages for those looking to be commercial pilots. Firstly, there's one called the Airline Career Pilot Program. The nine-month course costs $83,995. But there's also the 100-plus-hour multi-engine option that costs $93,995. 
For both of these programs, certain exam tests, such as the important FAA license and examiner fees aren't included and can add a further $8,200. Both courses include an airline transport pilot certification training program, which is required to work as a pilot. For all of the courses and training, some sources state it can cost at least $25,000, but can easily creep over $100,000. It can take years to log the required hours if not going to a flight school on a daily basis. Over in Europe, the costs can be similar. In the UK, private corporate pilots have stated that initial training can amount to around £80,000 or US dollars Then, in order to specify the type of planes you're looking for, courses can add a further £35,000 or $49,000. On average, a corporate pilot can bring in $80,000 per year in the U.S., while some pilots for the Gulfstream G650 have been known to bring in $198,000 per year. Yet they aren't paid a typical salary, instead they're paid per hour. On average, they'll work up to 150 hours of flight per month. Pilots on airlines will get paid an annual salary. They can work up to 240 hours of flight per month. For that, they can get between $140,000 and $260,000 per year in America. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median annual salary for a private commercial pilot was $93,300 in May of 2020. The lowest 10% earned less than $47,570, while the highest 10% brought in at least $200,920. They also believe that employment of private pilots will increase by 9% from 2019 to 2029. While in France, a co-pilot for an airline gets between €4,000 to €11,000, or $4,800 to US dollars per month, giving us a yearly salary of between €48,000 to €132,000, or £58,000 to US dollars while a captain can get up to €18,500, or $22,000 per month. Yearly, that would be €222,000, or US dollars. Over in the UK, according to industry experts, a first officer pilot or co-pilot for a private corporate plane gets around £25,000, or $35,000 per year while the captain can get between 60,000 to 100,000 pounds or 83,000 to 139,000 US dollars. After the pilot hits 500 hours of flight, their pay increases further. One of the biggest non-commercial pilot jobs is flying the US president in Air Force One. However, not anyone can do this. You have to be a pilot working for the US military's 89th Airlift Wing. On top of that, most pilots are at the rank of colonel, which typically takes about 22 years to get. Yet even with all that experience and the pressure of ferrying the president, the salary doesn't increase as a result. Instead, the pilot will get paid a typical colonel salary, which is between $83,174 to $147,244 for 2020. Final fun fact finish. One of the most expensive autonomous aerial vehicles, or drones, is the Ehang 216. This electric-powered drone was built as an air taxi. The 216 is able to carry two people for an hour and a half with a range of around 44 miles. According to reports, it's set to cost $336,000. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.